Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to make the update from version 7 point something to, well, the newer. Uh, basically this is only in reference to the soft class pointer change from the T subclass of. So basically if I hit play, I want to head and update my plugin. This is the uh, tutorial project. We'll see three errors here. So I'm going to go ahead and load the first one. And I'll go ahead and just load the second one as well. So these are very simple. And I'll kind of cover the reason why here in a second, but first let's fix up this guy on all of them. So here we just basically have our possible attachments array. This has been removed to replace with a getter for a blueprint. So we're just going to call get possible attachments instead and plug it in and remove it just like so. Very simple. Same thing for this guy here. So get possible attachments, plug it in. and remove it. So now we have this issue. So you can see here, this takes in an actor class reference, but what we're getting is a sauce class reference. Now, this was the change that was made. So let me find it really quick. If I head over to one of the data assets. So we'll do the one for the sites now. So for example, here we have our attachments and the actor class is now, instead of it being a hard reference, it's now a soft reference. The reason for that is I don't want to have all these assets loaded basically all the time. So when we have all these hard references, same thing, this is also the problem with blueprint casting, is it is loaded into memory. And when you have a soft reference, that allows you to load the asset into memory, and then you can un unload the asset from memory. You can kind of pick and choose when you want it to be loaded up and when you want to unload it. Or you can load it and also have... Uh, if everything kind of loses its way, the garbage collection should be able to go through and clean it up for you. So this is just a memory optimization. Now, you have to use it a little bit differently, but the concept is pretty much the same. Now, the easiest one to show is here. So there are two ways to really to load an asset in Blueprint. That is the normal synchronous load. So in this case, it's called uh, load class asset blocking. And then if we head over to the event graph, because it's uh, done asynchronously, oops, we search for load, we now have asynchronous load class asset. Now, I'm not going to go too much depth, but think of it like this. Uh, with load class asset blocking, let's say we have a bunch of logic here. So let's say we have our, uh, you know, get and show all part widgets. And then we have our set text node after that. So the way this works is we have all of our, you know, this logic runs, and then we load our asset. Well, this can take some time depending on the asset because it's got to go through. It's got to load everything up and construct it. Then when we get to the uh, actual set text, the asset has already been loaded. So basically set text has to wait for this node to finish. So no matter what, if you have a little bunch of assets that you're loading at once, this can cause forms of hitching. So that's why we have another type called async load class asset. So if I do this now, this node gets called, and then immediately after, set text gets called. So tech, set text can run before the asset's even fully loaded. So for reference here, we call get and show all part widgets, async load class asset gets called, then set text gets called, then once this asset is finished loading, we will run the completed execution pin and the print string will fire. So it's basically a way to load the asset without blocking the game thread. But in this case, we're keeping it simple and it's really not too big of a deal with what we're doing because it is just a simple customizer, nothing fancy. So we're gonna call load class asset blocking and that'll prevent us from having to rewrite anything because we would have to move this to the event graph in Blueprint if we wanted to have the asynchronous load. But now that we have that, still can't quite plug it in yet because part takes in an actor. So what you can either do is change out the part type to be an object, or you can just cast this to an actor. Really kind of depends on you in the case of the tutorial because we're not really going to be using this once we actually get to writing our own customizer from scratch. I'm just going to cast it to an actor. And that'll just keep things simple for well and quick for this video for moving forwards. So we can compile and we are good to go. So that's really all there is. Next up, we wanna go ahead and do this guy. It's the exact same thing. 
So here we have our cast of an actor class, but we're trying to class or cast a soft class reference to a hard class. Can't, well, of a card class type, we can't do that. So we need to again load the asset. Now this gives us both options because we are in the event graph. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to go ahead and do another blocking call only because, well, it's just simple and we're not even going to use this going forward. But if you wanted to, you could do asynchronous, wrong one, asynchronous load class, plug it in, and then when it's completed, it'll do that. And that's it. So go ahead and save all. Hit play. Here we have our last one. Let's see here. So we have the same thing. So get possible attachments. Plug that in. Go ahead and move everything over a little bit. And here we have our actor class, in which case we want to load it. And plug it in. like so, and we are done. So now when we hit play, we are good to go. Alrighty, so that's going to wrap up this video, and uh, yeah, this is just kind of something I can link to people without having to write out any form of an answer, but hopefully it covers what you need. Anyways, that's going to wrap this video up, and I'll see you in the next one.